Hey, Scott from Aristocob.com here. My back hurts. And Seth from SethMarkwood.com. My back feels fine. It's doing all right here. Together, along with you, the three of us, we are two and a half men. <laughs> this is weird. I thought last week's episode was weird, doing keto ice cream and air fryer, but no, we are off to a rocky start this week. Uh, yeah. Speaking of, the grilled cheese <laughs> is smelling great. Cheese is melting. I'm excited for the end of the episode getting to eat that. <laughs> All right, so what we're smoking today is from our buddy Glenn. Uh, Glenn sent us several tobaccos for Tobacco Advent, and this one happens to be something called Cherokee. This is from the Country Squire Tobacconist, and this is a black Cavendish. Sweet. And I'm going to smoke it in a brand spanking new Naked Country Gentleman. Nice. See, Country Squire, and my mind goes to Country Gentleman. Yeah. And nothing like a Naked Country Gentleman. <laughs> this. A few things. A few things. A few, okay. <laughs> a few things like, like that. So I haven't seen a bird friend in a while. Two we birds in here, yeah. Uh, did have two birds. I don't know if they're sleeping. See, if they, we, they've, if been, we, they've been pooping them a clock over yeah, there. Oh, yeah. If we smoked them out or what, but. Probably so. They've not been, not been very mobile recently. It smells nice. How have you been doing? Good. Yeah? Been doing well yourself? Um, excellent. What are you talking about today? Well, um, I, I want to go back to a conversation we had several weeks ago we talked about uh earbuds yeah i did some more research on them and uh, one of the things i really wanted was earbuds that i could use while working in the shop okay and you know one of the problems i have when i use my wired earbuds and then put the earmuffs on that are supposed to protect my hearing they're usually hanging right here and they're not is it's um it, it, it creates a gap where the wires pass by, and the inside of those earmuffs want to push on the little stem part of the Apple ear, earbuds, mm -hmm. and it just it never feels right. So then I have the decision to make, do I just want to ear, have the earbuds in and listen to music, right. um, which is potentially dangerous, but then it gets more dangerous because I'll turn the volume up because the tools are running, and um, or not have the music. Well, I like music too much. I could have music cranking through the stereo in uh, in the shop here. But if I want to shoot videos for YouTube, and I have those segments where it's just me, you know, cutting some stuff or turning some things, I really can't have the music cranking. What about the earbuds that you bought? They're too dang big to use under the earmuffs. They just stick out too much. So I did some research, and these are the ones that sit pretty flush to your ear. They weren't very flush. They weren't as flush as I would have liked. Uh, I also have Dude, a very the Halo GT one. I have a very narrow ear canal too, and I find that they don't really want to penetrate very well. They want to fall out. Did you did you change of, the tip? I'm just is I, the computer on? Is it plugged in? I don't know. Do we have too many calculators? <laughs> Never. So I did some research and I found this company called Isotunes and they offer several headsets and earbuds that are OSHA compliant for noise reduction. Mm. And so that is what I have around my neck right now. They have several different versions. This one right here, you'll notice has some rare earth magnets to keep these mm -hmm. dangling things from, from winding up in places you don't expect them to. Um, has eight hours of playtime. Nice. Rechargeable, of course. You plug it in right there. You got your volume control. It also has a microphone, so it works as a, you know for your phone if you need to make a com have a conversation with it on the phone. Interchangeable ear plugs, but those are legit ear plugs. So to get these into your ear, you do just like you do those little those foam. little those little foam nipple shaped ones, where you got to deform this a little bit, compress it down. A little yeah. and then ideally you reach over your head and pull up on your ear like that as you press it in and that expands the ear canal enough to get them in 
and then the foam slowly builds into the point right right now it feels like the sound it's very very muffled and uh like i say it's wonderful yeah these have been really nice i've been using them now for a little while i picked these up at the um that just fell out of your ear i just pulled it out of my ear mm, no <laughs> i picked these up at workbench con and they don't fall out of my ear mm. i like them a lot so that's been uh, a regular accessory that i've nice. wearing for a couple of weeks now. and what's the the cost on that $79 and um, while I was at the show they had a special on them and they had a special on replacement earplugs and they didn't have any of the plugs on hand mm -hmm. they're regularly $10 for 10 and uh, they were $5 for 10 and the guy said I'm sorry we don't have any of the small ones on hand or we've sold out of them give me your name I'll send you a coupon that you can use to get the discount Thanks. So he, uh, after the show, says, you know what? We talked about it. I'm going to do you one better. Sorry we let you down. Um, use this coupon. You're going to get a free pack of them. Even better. So I got a free pack of them. So very generous. More importantly, I like them. I've been using them a lot, and uh, the, I've yet to have the things run down on me. Mm. So. That's good customer service. Mm -hmm. I had a fun uh, customer service experience. We had, um, uh, for Christmas last year not this most recent year 2018 i was given a ten dollar gift card for scamstuff.com the <laughs> official store of scam school to talk about all the time and they have released a it's a stupid it's their mark their mm, their marketing is so good um they are very very good about building a community and I mentioned before, I backed the uh, I backed a Kickstarter basically just for the property they were buying. Um, you know, they're, 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 they bought property so they can film and expand what they're capable of doing and turn it into actually a full-time gig. And they recently um, uh, started offered for sale a pen. It's a, one of those gravity pens with pencil and different color ink. You know, the four different um, four different. Uh, colors that uh, there's a ball bearing that as you spin it you can click to the different colors click to and there's whatever. a pencil built into it it's got a mechanical pencil built into it as well it says um modern rogue on it and it is like i forget what they what they called it it's it's the um i don't know the branding on it's great it's it's the, the important things pin or something something like that and and oh, Brian from uh, Wolf of Wall Street. No, 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 no. Brian makes a makes a video where he talks about talks about um, goal setting and talks about you know how goals that he has set when he writes them down they've they've come to fruition. This and this and this and this. And uh, and he said, look, um, you the community has been so generous to us and and have. Uh, allowed some of our greatest goals to come to fruition that we we want to be uh, a part of some of the big decisions and big moments in your life and so uh you know we, it would be an honor to us when you're signing that new contract or signing whatever that you're, you're using this pin mm -hmm. as part of our community and so that's why and he said that you know that's why um this pin uh has free refills for life um if you buy it if you ever lose it, anything's damaged. It's it's free replacements for life. Uh, wow. This is this should be the the one and only last pin that you need to have for all the big moments. Wow! You have. So like super super cool and and you know limited time. Um, it's uh, you know forty dollars full retail, twenty dollars whatever limited time. Really really neat. Um, just like I'm feeling I'm so feeling so stupid. I'm buying this pin that I know I could get online uh for for cheap but it's such a great community building thing like man I, i'm happy to continue to support them what they do there you pay 20 bucks for it? so i had this gift card um a 10 dollar gift card from christmas months ago or uh, two years ago it didn't work it didn't work and so i wrote their customer support and said i am pretty confident i did not use this i'm I, i've got you know the only emails that i would have used for this uh the only receipts i have um, I've not purchased anything other than the the, the Kickstarter. Uh, I said I don't, I don't know what what the deal is. Here is the the, the gift card code. Um, let me know what's going on. Excuse me. And and uh, within just a couple of hours, got a response back. 
from the customer support. And it was, it was, uh, here you go, this, this one should work. And they gave me a new coupon code, and the, the coupon code was Seth Oops. Uh, <laughs> and, and a little winky face. It's like, oh, that's a nice, a nice personal touch, you yes. know? Um, and, and so I, I did buy it, and it ended up being, I don't know, 20 bucks with shipping and everything, but. Yeah, so. Do you have it, it yet? Com no, it's, ah. it comes, it, it's, it's going to be released uh, mid to late April. Okay, so speaking of writing implements, I have my everyday carry items in my pocket. And I always, always, always have one of these uh, Uniball Signo 207 pens. This is my favorite pen, and uh, I buy these now by the dozen. And I have never had until this pen, I've never had a pen that I used until I wore it out. Okay, I, I'm, I'm usually you know losing them, replacing yeah. whatever. These, I, the I, I use them up. The I also have, we've talked about this before, the... Um, yeah. The zebra copy of the uh, Sharpie. the Sharpie that I love. This has been fantastic. I, it writes on everything. I've written on some things like this ain't gonna work, right? Writing on something like wax paper. This is not gonna. Oh, look at that, it worked. It's been great. But what I don't have and have wanted for a while is a decent. Uh, what are you doing? Taking so your clothes well, let me let me let me let me let me show the good fine people something it writes on. This belt. Has a has a thin like think M and M candy coating on it <laughs> that the first time you drop it the first time you take your pants off you you, you have a, an aggressive bathroom visit or anything it chips and it comes off this to buy and replace this I have to buy a new belt and it's sixty dollars this is the second one I got tired of doing that I discovered that with this zebra marker it does a heck of a job of sharpening in oh. and as long as as long as I do it you know when I'm getting ready to give a presentation or whatever um, you would not know so I can tell you about half of this surface now is totally chipped off to where it's just <laughs> it's, zebra. it's just it's just like <laughs> steel underneath and it's it's zebra you you can probably see looking up yeah, close yeah. Oh, yeah. you would have no idea looking at it straight on you have no idea um, so yeah Wow, that's, that's I, it's funny. It's funny. These are the things you carry. These are the two things I have with me at all times at work, sitting right here, <clears throat> hanging in my shirt. So, what, what I you're missing? What Sorry. I have, what I've wanted to have in my pocket, is a good mechanical pencil, mm. and I have scattered all over my desk and in my backpack and here in the shop the cheapest Bic mechanical pencils. They have that. The, you know, eraser on the top like a regular number two pencil and uh but they're disposable mm. they're, they're big but they work like a big lighter but i don't like them in my pocket they, they sit too high um and because the clip is way way up at the mm -hmm. top and they're too long and, the, and i just don't like it and then having this plastic thing sticking out of my pocket alongside of these it just it doesn't belong there right so i did some research to find a mechanical oh, nice. pencil that I thought I would like, and uh, this is a um, what is that? Pentel. Mm. It's, a, it's a Japanese yeah. pencil, and what's interesting about this one is it's got a huge opening on the end that couldn't possibly support a, a, a lead the size I like. But as you press mm. this, the actual support for the lead comes popping out. And it, it advances very slowly. So I'm not having to deal with, with the Bic. Every time I click it, mm -hmm. I have to end up pushing that thing back in. So it's not a crazy aggressive extension. And then when I go to put this back in my pocket, you press no that. Way. What? Oh, that's It cool. automatically retracts. So I can't put it in my pocket with it extended. I wish my ballpoint yeah. was built like that. Uh, it, it also has an eraser in the, the back end of it, like a lot of these mechanical pencils have. But I love this pen or pencil. I've been using it now for a week, and it has earned its spot in my pocket. So I, I was just going to tell you, I think that Zebra makes a mechanical pencil that is similar in design to this, yeah. although without some of these bells and whistles. That is, that is cool. What's the cost on something like this? About ten, twelve dollars. It's not bad for a good, a good piece of kit. Yeah. The only thing I would think or be interested in is I'm, I'm curious how long these the colors ribbings will will 
stay oh, on it's, it. that's knurled. That's that's knurled into the surface, so that's going to stay there. I don't know that the it's, color is going to stay. That's, but I yeah, don't that's, really, what I, that's what I mean. That, I don't really care. Uh, I, well, I mean, if, if those jewels are glued in, will they pop no, out? No, it's, it's a paint, and it's painted here, it's painted there, okay. and the top is a matching color. So yeah. the different size LEDs are available with different colors. So you could have, if you were an artist or doing, you know, pencil sketching, you could have all these. No, that, that's not a that's not a paint. That's no, it's it's it's, it's an enamel. Homer, Homer, it, you're you're wrong. You're wrong on this one. These 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 no, these are rub these are rubber grips, and they you, you can peel them. Well, don't I, peel I'm, them. I, well, I'm proving a point here, um, but I think I, I suspect looking at it that they may be one sleeve underneath this and so I, I don't know that they'd fall off but peel it you can it's not all paint. right it's not paint. thank you i'm not worried about it that's super cool well i will definitely show off my modern rogue i want to see that pen when it comes in and and you know the, the fact that like they said you know run it over with your car we'll replace it free replacements for life it's uh the, the, the pen pen of ages so it sounds like we it. need to do some fun experiments with it no, uh, yeah. Use it as a tent stake. <laughs> yes. No. I don't wanna. I'm sure there's some fine print in there that I didn't read um, about uh, appropriate and inappropriate uses uses for it. That's taken forever. That's been that's, it, been, that's been in there a week now. It, <laughs> it is. Um, it's it's. I, I'll say it's not looking crispy, oh, it's, but it's, it's 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 solid. It's getting stale. It's getting stale. We're doing low and low and slow. Did you butter bit. that one? I, I buttered the snot out of it, yes. All right. We're doing low and slow. Um, how do you feel about mayonnaise on your grilled cheese? You know, there's a place for mayonnaise. <laughs> it's on, it ain't on grilled cheese. Well, it's, it's, it's on that one, so. <laughs> it's, on, it's on that one. That's something something I have inherited from my wife. I want to talk. Wait, wait, I'll go tell ahead. you something funny. Yeah. When I was a kid, my mom used to make what I would call an open face grilled cheese, where she would she would toast a load of bread under the boiler, so mm -hmm. you know enough for all of us five kids, and then she would slap flip, cheese she on. would flip it over, slap the cheese yeah. on, and then that would get a layer of mayonnaise, and I loved that. Yeah. But since then, I don't put it on my uh, grilled cheese. Mm -hmm. And you go to places like Mickey's Cafe over in K Vegas. And they'll always ask you when you say, I'd like a grilled cheese with mayonnaise. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought it was super weird. Um, it's not something I had ever experienced before getting married, um, but that's the way her family has always done it. And yeah, I like it. Um, and uh, on keto, it's great because Duke's mayonnaise, and mayonnaise is zero carb and adds a little bit extra flavor. So you know the other thing that we used to do when I was a kid? And I think we picked this up from um, our Mexican housekeeper, Berna Bay. Um, she would make for us just white bread with butter and sugar sprinkled on it. Oh, yeah. It wasn't toasted or anything. Oh, yeah. You just ate that again, open face. Well, that's not too dissimilar from what they do in um, uh, Australia with Vegemite. They do Vegemite and and uh, sprinkles. By the way, I just made us sound like, like super fancy. We were living in Laredo, Texas, and Burna Bay would cross over the border every day. And uh, most days of the week, she worked for my grandmother, who didn't cook and didn't do much housekeeping. And uh, a couple days a week, while my dad was over in Thailand flying missions over Vietnam, uh, my grandmother would loan us Berna Bay, who could come over and help my mom do some stuff. Mm. And uh, so, you know, our, ho our Mexican housekeeper, that's who it was. Yeah. And, and when my mom was a little girl, the same lady was... The housekeeper. Really? Yeah, so she grew up with this guy. That's cool. Yeah. Um well I had a piece of technology I wanted to want to talk about briefly um before we eat our grilled cheese. Uh so I discovered discovered um I don't know a while ago, not too recently, uh NFC tags. NFC near field communication are uh, tags and they, they just look like stickers and you can get a pack of them. And if back you can like back that. like that, yeah, that'd be great. Um, the NFC is a small chip that- um, uh, It's like a transponder. It is just like a transponder that when held up to a reader um, is actually powered by the radio signal from the reader 
and is able to then transmit data. It is like a transponder then, okay. And so um, many modern phones have NFC readers and subsequently writer uh, capabilities in them. And so the iPhone that we're recording this on uh, has that capability. If it's not built in and integrated to your phone, you can uh, many times download an app and get some level of access to, to do certain things with that. And so the ways you can use this are pretty unique um, and, and pretty, pretty cool. One way um, is if you have a writer um, uh, for your phone, a, a, a writer, uh, and then I want to say writer, a writer, uh, an NFC uh, app capable of writing data, you can you can store small amounts of data onto one of these. And so what you do is you put in on your phone, on your app, what data you want it to be in here, and then you uh, hold it up and it, it sends the information over them, and then it is stored on this and it's permanently stored until it's either erased or, or rewritten. And so you could put a secret message on one if you wanted to, that someone else could come along and, and scan and basically touch their phone to it and read the data and they would get that the details of that message. Um, you could put something like a URL on it and, and have that. And so my phone, being an iPhone 11, has the ability to, um, to read the information on here natively. I can just tap it, oops, tap it with my phone, boop, and it will pop up and say, hey, you wanna open this information and so, if I wanted to put like, let's say a link to a YouTube channel or something, I could put that information on here and then touch my phone to this and my phone would prompt me, do you want to open this this YouTube channel? So you could do that with a QR code as well without mm -hmm. any need for this thing to have electronics in it. So what does that do for me that a QR code doesn't do? Well, so in that specific instance, in that specific instance, let's say, you wanted to um, you wanted to have a, a poster um, that would link people to a thing. Uh, you could have this be a sticker that doesn't have to show information that just says touch your phone here or scan here and they can do it without having to, to, to pull that out. Um, in many ways, the limitations are similar because not every phone can natively read a QR code. iPhone can now if you, if you open up your uh, photo app and scan a QR code, it will immediately read that um, and it will prompt you, hey, do you want to open this without having to do so anything extra? I have an iPhone S, I'm Eight. sorry, 8S, and I downloaded the app and the particular app that you were recommending was NFC Tools, which mm -hmm. is a little orange icon with an N in the middle of it. And um, we were playing around with this, and, and this doesn't work so well with this generation of iPhone. I have to manually open the app, click on the button that says read, and then present this to I'm not sure which one it is now. Oh, that's it. Okay, and it says uh, approaching a NFC tag, and then it opened up that tag, and that's I can the see, one. oh, there's nothing on that. That was blind. Scan this one. So we'll try that again. And it goes blink, it gives me a little noise, or a little, Texture or what? I don't know. Boings, ha haptic, it boings uh, it. Haptic <laughs> feedback. And uh, and if I scroll down to the very bottom, it tells me what's on there, which is a QR code. I'm oh, sorry, a, a website. And if I it's click, open if I click open. on the link, oh, because you didn't put a wobble you wobble you wobble you in. I, I had, but yeah. Sure it did. It did. Anyway, so for this generation of phone, it's more cumbersome. It's really cumbersome, but for yours, which we happen to be filming on, yeah. it's really very cool. And especially as you're starting getting into smart home technology where you've got things communicating with your uh, Alexa or Google Home, things like that, he's able to set up, they're called shortcuts. So on, on, the, on iOS, there's an app called Shortcuts and it's, it's a spring off of an old app called Workflow or Workflowy, I think. Um, and I'm sure there's a version, a similar product on Amazon. So on the iPhone, you can set up these uh, sequences of shortcuts and you can set up automations in there. And so I could have anything, um, anything triggering that. I could say when I open a certain app, I want these five other things to also happen in the background of my phone um, and it will do it automatically. I can say when I leave the office, for instance, if I give it access to my GPS, I could say when I leave the office, I want um, it to text my wife that says, on my way home, here's my EPA, e ETA, 
and it'll send, you know, a, 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 a ETA when I'm going to be home. So, but so to use that, you would have to open your phone, unlock the screen, click on, no, I'm saying if you weren't using this, click on the shortcut. Oh, you're using it with the GPS, GPS on your phone. Right. I see. So, so the, the phone trigger, yeah, that's right. the phone trigger can be set up to be any number of different things. So you can set up a trigger based off of time. It says it's six o'clock. Um, instead of just having an alarm go off, you could say, I want um, you to open Spotify and start playing my most favorited playlist. And it will do that. And so what's where it gets really fun with the NFC tags is that you can use them as a trigger for these sequences. And so then you can, can think about places that you could put these that it might be convenient to just tap your phone onto a surface and have a sequence of events happen automatically. And so, you know, thinking about our channel and thinking about what we do, I, I thought, uh, let me tell you how I use them. I, I've got a couple of them that I have set up. One of them I have sitting on my CPAP. I've, I've taken the sticker and this is just a peel and stick um, traditional sticker, I've, I've stuck it onto my CPAP machine, my, my uh, breathing mask that I use when sleeping. Um, it's on the machine which sits on my bedside table no matter where I am. I take it with me when I travel. Um, when I take my phone and I tap it to that, the, it, it starts up a shortcut automation that opens Netflix, goes to uh, the office and chooses a random episode and starts playing it. Because when I go to sleep every night, I listen to The Office. I don't care what episode I've seen them all. Um, so it's playing and, in your head, and you're just listening to it. And yeah, and so I've got I've got an earbud in, and a single earbud in when I go to sleep, and it it plays. And I'm just listening to it, and so without thinking, without having to fiddle with my phone, open the app, I tap my phone, bloop, set my phone down for the night. The night seconds later, um, an episode is playing in my ear. Another another automation. Um, that uh, that a lot of people use is they use it to control the lights in their house. Um, they may have a sticker on the uh, the side of a chair and they tap it and it changes the lights to mood lighting. There are people so that- it's, it's, it's doing things that you would, could do with your phone. 100%. It's gotta be something it's that you can do with your phone. It's just animating that action. Automating. Automating. So like I, I did one because one of the things I find in myself doing constantly my wife is constantly losing her phone and, oh, lo and, lo ooh, and losing her iPad. The grandkids will run off with one or the other of them or she'll forget that the phone's in the pocket somewhere or she'll have the phone set for vibrating and she's not answering and I need to talk to her. So I end up going over to find my iPhone, opening it up, it takes a little bit for it to find all the different devices and then I have to remember, okay, which one is which? All right, there she is, right there. I set up a shortcut to where now all I have to do is go to shortcuts and press that that says One button. that says where's Jandy. I hit that. It automatically opens up the app, searches just for her mm. phone. I hit play sound and then it, it overrides the silent on her phone right. and starts the ding. So if you wanted to, you could with automations set it up to automatically hit the play sound button too. So as soon as you open it up and you say, where's Jandy, it'll open the app mm. and we'll start pinging her phone. I should do that. You should, because it, it cuts out even more of the process. Um, so, but I still now am going to my phone, unlocking the screen, scrolling over to the app, opening the app, the shortcut app. Right. If this thing would work for my phone, which it doesn't work quite right, yeah. that'd be great. I'd put one of these stickers at my desk. I'd put one of these on the dash of my car. A lot of people do this, that. I just have one only for that purpose. So a lot of people put them on the dash of the car for the start my ride home. And it will, um, you know, again, send a message. Open, it, it can open up Waze and automatically take me home um, in Waze. And then they'll have it like set up their podcast and listen to most recent podcasts. Mm. All of these things, one, two, three apps and, and sequences happening that you can do it, but it's going to take you a couple of, of minutes to do that. Or with one tap, you can, you can have it automate. One way I've used it is I've got one on my um, headphones, my headphone case. I've got AirPods and I've got one, a sticker on the back of the case there. What can be annoying is if I've been using my um, Bluetooth earphones at work connected to my laptop, when I get in the car and I want to start listening on my phone, I've got to manually 
connect them to my phone. It's simple, but you know, it's annoying when I, what I want is just to connect automatically. Um, the, the, the sticker on the back of the case allows me to just tap it and it will automatically connect to Bluetooth on my phone. And so I don't have to go through that process. So I was thinking, you know, how could we apply it to what we do here? Well, um, you take something like a Zippo lighter, which is the perfect uh, size for one of these stickers. And you could put on here uh, a, a shortcut that maybe sets your phone to do not disturb mode for 15 minutes or do not disturb mode for uh, the time that you are in that GPS location because who wants their phone to be ringing while you're smoking your pipe or, or, shooting, a video. or shooting a video. You could have you could have something if you have a pipe like this, <laughs> you could put it on the bottom of the pipe and you could have it um, so that it automatically opens up to Mark Women's Breakfast Club and starts playing the most recent video. And so all you have to do is when you're sitting down with your pipe, you've got it lit, you tap your phone, and then it automatically starts playing most recent. Oh, that'd be fun. And so there's a lot that can be done. Um, I'm sure that Android has, has a lot of features. And one of the things that prompted this as a topic, you know, I've had these for a while and have, have played around with them. A 28 pack of these cost me like $8 on Amazon. Um, but uh, Scam School, uh, Modern Rogue actually did a video recently where one of the guys got a NFC chip implant into his hand. And um, the, the people they were, were interviewing, they are um, uh, Deviant Olaf um, is one of them. They're, um, they do security testing for businesses. And so their channel and a lot of the stuff they do is they talk about basically hacking into security systems through manual exploits like using um, film, uh, a canister of film to go over a door frame right, down and, and right. open the door, um, other types of hacking. And so one of the things that can be done with an NFC chip is if you have the right reader, you could read somebody's uh, badge information. You can write that same badge information to an NFC tag and walk up to many readers and you're in with their credentials. Oh wow. And so you do the same you do the same thing with an implant. So they can write the information here and they were talking about how there have been times where he has his guest badge and um, will get into you know he's he's hired to do this. We'll get into the secure a secure area because they've been able to steal someone's security tag. And they'll go they'll they'll be caught. They go back, take them to security to watch the footage. And all they see is him taking his tag and and rubbing it up against the, the door and, and the door opens because it's scanning the, ta the, the implant in his hand and, and it lets him in. And they're like, I don't understand why. It, it, he, all he did is scan his tag and he can play dumb and, and, and shrug it off. And so- He can scan his driver's license and get in. <laughs> that's right, so- That's crazy. Um, so it, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with them. Uh, definitely worth checking them out. There's a lot of people smarter than me on uh, what, YouTube and, what and are these, Reddit. And, one of these days, we should think about this. We should come up with some useful Mark Men's Breakfast Club related thing and, and make these available to these guys. Yeah. But you know, send us a self-addressed stamp envelope and we'll we'll send you one. Maybe maybe we will add them to. Whoa, shoot. <laughs> you good? Yeah. Maybe we'll add them to next year's uh, uh, <laughs> ornament. 3D printed ornaments. That's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> embed it inside of the... We could add them to last year's printed. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready for this grilled cheese? I am ready for this grilled cheese. All right. So we've got... I got a pocket knife. Oh. <laughs> so here we've got a little bit uneven cooking on there. So this, this side got cooked really well. This uh, side is, is dried out, much. but not quite as crisp. But the cheese... Is nice and melted. And that only took a week and 30 minutes. That's right. That's right. Oh, man, it's done. It's done. So, uh, pocket knife. I've got a relatively clean one. Good. And a Here, clean. I'll, I'll, I'll hold half of this. Cutting oh, we're surface. not cutting diagonally? You know, oh, it's, my so, goodness. it's scientifically proven that people like eating points better. Ooh. Roasty toast. Goodness, wow, it, it is. Oh, Look at that. Man. That cheese pull was great. Woo. Okay. 
Ready? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Alright, I've got mayonnaise on. Yep. <laughs> Alright, what do you think? Well, I think we're breaking our own rule now, twice, our rule about we don't really eat on film. Ah, that's um, fine. On camera. Unless we're doing a uh, food review. Look, we've eaten, um, we've eaten uh, fruitcake and we did it a onions long, long and long chips. Time ago and we ate food, uh, fruitcake. Yeah. Hey, so, if, you, if you haven't seen that episode, do some tri time travel and go look at our previous episodes and find the fruitcake episode. So, on the one hand, the amount of time it takes to cook a grilled cheese sandwich is absolutely absurd. On the other hand, the fact that we made it, cooked a grilled cheese while filming an episode and a half of Mark Women's Breakfast Club and doing nothing else is pretty cool. And what I like about the way it cooks it, and it, this is something I like to cook, uh, I tend to cook things with the pan too hot. And so there are times that I'll get really nice toast and not super uh, melty cheese mm. on a grilled cheese. Yeah, so this is the way I like them low and slow. I do cook in a pan very, very low oh. because I like I like to get not only the cheese melted, but I like to get that bread crisp. Really cool. Um, an air fryer. Was there something? There was something else I wanted to mention, but I guess I didn't well, know what it was. We had mentioned. Look, um, there's been a lot of stuff in the news recently, and a lot of stuff coming up. We've talked in the past about vaping. Um, if you vape. And enjoy doing that in your free time uh, look into what's going on there the FDA rules are coming up I think May 12th is when um, vaping company is gonna have to start complying with the I think it's PMKT the marketing um, guidelines where they have to have every product um, certified and tested and a process that could take up to cost up to five hundred thousand dollars per product per unique flavor, etc. And we know a lot of companies just won't bother doing that. So what, the, the options product, are going to be really limited. Is going to go on clearance and that's it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's possible. Um, and the prediction is that that process of approval could take years because there's expected to be a backlog of the companies that do um, do that. And the other thing is uh, flavored tobacco has recently been, been in the news with the house passing a ban on all flavored tobacco products, which would include e-cigs, cigarettes, and cigars, any tobacco with casing, um, pipe tobacco with casing. Uh, at this point, um, the word on the street is it's unlikely to uh, pass at the Senate or even maybe even make it to the Senate, and it's unlikely uh, to be vetoed, but still, the fact that it passed the House um, is, is something to take note of. and. And be aware of and, and we all in the community know that that our hobby is is it's it's in the gun sites yeah that's right so, so i don't know if this cavendish tobacco cherokee um that was sent to us by glenn that is made by uh, country squire tobacconist i don't know if that has any casing in it or not because you don't have to case a cavendish tobacco um, but I think a lot of them do have vanilla and other casings in it. Um, I know that my favorite, Lane One Q, certainly has mm -hmm. added flavors to it. I wish I had more of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, so um, keep keep up to date with that news, and I'm sure the next time we get together, if there's any any uh, thing of of note on that, we'll bring it up. Appreciate you cooking my uh, my breakfast today. Yeah, well, this was good. That was good. I enjoyed it. All right. Well, hey, thanks for joining us. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Leave us a comment down below. Uh, yeah, hopefully something we talked about inspired you to leave us a comment. Um, check to see if your phone on the settings. Just actually, you can just search your phone to see if NFC comes up and see if your phone has a reader and that capability. And if it does. Check these things out. I, I also bought some on Amazon to play with it. Yeah. Like I said, my phone is old enough that it can read them, it can write them, but it's not automatic. I have to open yeah. the app and play with it. But uh, 
Check in which it out. case, it's kind, of, kind of cool actually. In which case, you could use it for secret messages or ooh, what a bank account information or whatever. Put put some in your bug out bag. I don't know, but generally they're just fun fun to play with. So pretty far, cheap toys. So far, they have been. All right. Well, that's it. Make it a great week, and we will see you again next week. See ya.